Hi, my name is Ben Norton and I run a production company called Out Filming. And as well as all the standard production services, we specialise in technical filming. And one of our specialities is aerial filming with drones. Obviously we're CAA qualified and insured and we have a whole fleet of drones from DJI's Inspire 1, the S900, up to much bigger craft like the Skyjob 8s and the Freefly CS8 for lifting much heavier rigs. Now we're here today to talk about Freefly's new product, the Outer. It's great to see Freefly going back to their roots and producing airframes. They've certainly been teasing us a little while with their new flight control system, the Synapse, so we're quite excited to see how it's going to get on. One. It's great to see it come in a proper pedi case. Let's have a look inside. So it comes with a selection of wiring looms, which we'll talk about a bit later. A few spare parts. Some basic tools. Two additional strengths of vibration isolators. There's one already installed on the craft. A toad, a toad in the hole and some documentation, but I'd really recommend that you download the latest versions online. Lifting the top tray out, we immediately see the craft all snuggled up inside. A free fly claim that it collapses down to 33% of its original size. Now it sounds a little bit stupid, but one of the things I'm most excited about is having a handle on the craft. The number of times we have to move these things when they're fully built, it's, it's always an awkward nightmare, so it's great to see a handle. The other thing in the case, is the bottom battery tray. And that's pretty much it. Let's get rid of this. When you first get the craft out the box, we found that one of the easiest things to do is just to snap it straight into the bottom battery tray with the toad in the hole system. And that gives you a nice stable platform to work from when building up the craft. It's certainly one of the most compact heavy lift aircraft that we've ever seen. You can imagine strapping it to the back of your rucksack for a long hike, or putting it in some small space for transport, making life very, very easy for you. When the craft is collapsed down into transport mode, everything is held securely in place. The props are held by these foam cutouts, and the booms themselves are held by these small latches. Let's get it built out. It's a nice and simple process. You simply undo each of the latches holding the booms in place, and then slowly eke out each of the booms. Once the booms are folded fully out, it's just a simple case of pushing these latches together and that makes sure that each of the booms is really solidly held and you really know it's not going to go anywhere. It's a really nicely designed system. Next of course you can then take off the foam prop protectors and make sure you put them somewhere safe. Although it is great to see the free fly but a spare one in the box for you. Folding the craft back down again is equally as easy as putting it up. It's nice and simple. All you have to do is slide on each of the prop protectors to fold down the booms, pull on the latch and that releases them. And then it's simply just the case of folding everything back in. And the final stage is to lift up the little tabs and that stops the booms from moving. Finally, remove the bottom battery tray if it's still fitted with the toad in the hole system. Pop it back in the box. Two. Before you can fly the craft, there's a few bits and pieces that you need to install to get it ready for use. The first of these, and most importantly, is a receiver so you can actually remotely control it. Now in the middle of the airframe here, there are a number of little hatches which once you undo, you'll find wiring in place to make life a load easier for adding these additional bits and pieces. Behind these two here, it's all ready to run for Futaba S-Bus system or Grappler PPM. Behind this hatch at the front, you can install an FPV camera. And behind this hatch here, you can install a video downlink. In this case, we've installed a 5.8 gigahertz standard definition downlink. Now this will allow us to see our FPV camera and the on-screen display, which shows us all the telemetry of the craft. Behind this hatch here is a small jumper cable that when removed disarms the motors. 
This is obviously really important for when you're mapping your controller or when you're doing work on the craft in a workshop environment. The airframe itself is really well made. It has a real solid, robust feel to it. The carbon's nice and thick where it needs to be, and all the small detail and the small mechanical detail is really well thought out. The airframe comes with LED lights at the end of each of the booms. Now these are configurable to different colors and different color combinations. In the middle of the airframe is where the majority of the electronics live, and this has also been weatherproofed. At the back of the airframe, we can see here that it comes with standard EC5 connectors and there's a bright LED that shows you exactly which mode and status the craft is in. The craft provides two options on where you can mount your batteries, either on top in this cradle held down by the strap or similar configuration underneath. And in the centre of the craft you can see the small vibration isolation dampeners that come in a cartridge form so they're nice and easy to remove. Three. The Alta is a six engine aircraft and at the end of each of the booms is a prop, motor and underneath here is the ESC, the speed controller. All these have been designed in-house by Freefly. This means they're matched. Now this has three core benefits. The first is they're incredibly light and weight is the most important thing when you're looking at flight time. The second is they're all designed to work together so they run really, really efficiently which means more thrust for less battery consumption. The final piece of the puzzle is they're incredibly quiet. When flying with heavy loads, it's quite common for certain components to generate heat. Batteries, motors, ESCs. One of the things we noticed when we had this under a lot of load was how cool the motors remained. We did notice that there was heat coming from the base, which is where the ESC is mounted, and we were told that the metalwork around it has been designed to help dissipate this. It's now time for what I think is the most exciting phase of the build, which is mounting a gimbal to the outer. Now with Freefly developing the product, clearly it's been specifically designed for usage with the Movi. Now you can mount an M5, an M10 or an M15 with it, but there are limitations with what you can do with the M10. Mounting the Movi to the aircraft is dead simple thanks to Freefly's quick release toad in the hole system. It's as easy as popping the two components together, wait for your click, and then doing up the safety catch. The Alto has the best party trick of all. Not only can you mount a camera underneath, but you also have the option of putting one right on top. Now this probably isn't your typical flying configuration, Although we have talked to Freefly on whether you could mount a camera top and bottom, but it doesn't leave too many places for you to put your battery. For standard usage, if you had a camera underneath, you'd use the top battery tray and vice versa in the other setup. One of the things that really surprised us when we flew the outer is how far you can tilt the camera before the booms and props come into shot. It was amazing how high up the lower mount could go and how low down the top mount could go. A really great setup and obviously helped by the curvature of the booms. The free fly specification for the outer says it has a maximum takeoff mass of 13.6 kilos. This essentially leaves you 9.6 kilos of load carrying capability. Now the load has to include the battery, the gimbal, the camera, the lenses and any other accessories you may have. Now when we ran it in testing, we were able to carry a rigged Alexa Mini with a CP2, a follow focus motor and a full HD downlink. So the craft is more than capable of lifting a cinema grade setup. One of the other products that Freefly have released are the new aero legs for the Movi multi-rotor kit. Now these have replaced the previous version, which are much wider and therefore less aerodynamic. We always felt that flying side on created a lot of drag on the system. So we're hoping that these are gonna perform a lot better. Five. To set up and tune the outer, use an application which is available on both Android and iOS devices. It's very simple to use. You can tweak and tune numerous settings, allowing you to get the craft flying just how you like it. It has other features in there, such as help files, the ability to set the color of the LEDs, map your controller and so on. One of the features that we really, really liked though was the live telemetry and graphing. This allowed us to really understand what was going on with the aircraft, quickly allowing us to assess vibrations 
and motor temperatures and other important factors. Now the whole thing is done via Wi-Fi, so you're actually able to monitor the craft when it's flying. Having the ability to do this whilst the craft is airborne is really quite special. One, two, three, four, five. One of the most exciting features of the Alta is the new flight control system, Synapse. This is something that Freefly have been developing over the last few years. Now we've flown all sorts of different control systems, but over the last few years we've standardised on Digi. So it's with apprehension but also excitement that we tested the new flight system. Now the flight controller has three main operating modes. Manual, which is very similar to ATI. Manual with height hold and position hold which is just like GPS. Roger, you're allowed to here also. The most important thing is really how does it fly? And the short answer is it flies incredibly well. If you're used to flying an ATI, more of a manual pilot, then it flies like a dream. It's very smooth, it's very responsive, and you can get some great shots with it. Almost brave enough to say that it's one of the best craft we've ever flown. When you come to GPS mode, things are slightly different and I think Freefly still have a little bit of work to do to iron out the wrinkles with it. Flight times are great with a fully laden rig and our standard 10,000 milliamp batteries we were seeing seven minutes plus of flight time and we're talking a full cinema grade rig underneath. When we lightened the load up but on smaller cameras then we were sitting well into double figures. In fact Freefly have a great graph in their instruction manual which tells you flight times versus load an altitude and so on. It's important to note though that all these figures are done with Freefly's new 9000 milliamp batteries, not the slightly heavier, more common 10,000. So make sure you make that adjustment. One of the features that really surprised us was the new velocity clamping. This allows us to speed limit the vertical and horizontal axis of the craft. In application, this means you can really slow the craft right down allowing it to move very, very gently through the sky in a very controlled manner, and it delivers some stunning shots. The ability to top mount a camera was also very eye-opening. It really blew my mind as a camera operator on what we could do with the craft. And I think of all the jobs we've done in the past and how useful that would have been. The fact that the camera's up so high, it allows you to tilt past the horizon line. And working in unison with the pilot when the craft is lent over, you can achieve some really unthinkable angles with it. When flying the craft, we found there was very little need to adjust any or many of the settings when changing the camera position and even the camera size. This is quite exciting for those of you used to measuring centers of gravity and, and other factors. If you're used to flying the really sort of tiny Inspires, then this craft feels a lot more solid in the air. If you use some things more like the S900, then it flies very similar to that. And if you use the much bigger items, such as flat eights or X eights, the sky jibs, the CS eights of this world, then it also flies very similarly to an X eight configuration, much better than a flat eight. There's a few things that we'd like to see improved with the craft. The first is the toad on the top mount has to be removed to put the handle back on and mount the top batteries. The second, the bottom battery tray is a real faff if you want to put larger batteries in. But we've already been told by Freefly that there's a fix on the way. And the third, most importantly, is that the GPS or position hold mode doesn't fly as smoothly as we'd like it to. But I'm sure that's just going to be a case of some of the software revisions. We've already seen service bulletins from Freefly, so we know that they're super keen to get all these things ironed out. Five, four, three, two, one, end of death. To summarise, this is a great craft. It does so many things. The fact it's so compact and it packs down into a tiny form factor is great. The new flight control system is showing some real potential and we're quite excited to see where this goes. If you own an Alexa Mini, an Epic, or you're looking at the new Raven, or you own one of the Movi family, then this is definitely the craft for you. For us, this craft is definitely going to form part of our fleet. It allows us to replace a number of other craft in one swoop. We think that Freefly have done an excellent job with this and we're really excited to see what we can do with it.